Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. We're going to talk waterfowl this week. My guest is Mike Szymanski. Mike is the head waterfowl biologist here at Game and Fish. Mike, you and your crews are compiling data that you gathered from your breeding duck monitoring efforts that you do this time of year. Exactly what are the breeding duck efforts, monitoring efforts? Well, Tom, we do a survey every year in May uh, to figure out how our duck populations and habitat conditions are in the state. Um, we run eight transects that run north and south. They pretty much run from the South Dakota border up to the Canadian border. And they're run by uh, two crew, two man crews on each uh, of the transects. And we, we time them a little bit with uh, migration in the year. Sometimes they're a little bit earlier or later in the month of May. Okay, what do you do as you drive these transects? So as we're, as we're driving along, we, we make a lot of stops along the way. We're usually putting along fairly slowly, counting all of the water, classifying the water types, and then counting all the ducks and geese on the water. And we're also calling out the, the social groups, like how the, how the groups of ducks are composed, whether it's like three males and one female or a pair, and we also do it by species. And that gives us an indication of kind of the breeding effort and, and what we may or may not be seeing because of hens that are up in the grass nesting. I assume that's why you do it in May. Right, we wanna make sure that the birds have kind of settled out and are, are on breeding territories, they're a little bit more active, a little bit more consistent than in what they're doing as you get later in the year. Um, you start to have birds that are moving off onto molt migrations or grouping up, uh, groups of males that are grouping up as hens are taking broods off for brood rearing. So it's really the, the best period for uh, consistent counts. And, and you've also got a consideration for vegetation growth that you don't want to be too late in May where you might have a lot of obstruction by cattails and other growing vegetation in wetlands that would hide the ducks from you. This is an effort that's been going on for a long time. Right, this is our 70th annual uh, May duck survey in North Dakota, so it's um, quite likely the, the longest waterfowl survey um, possibly even in the world that's been done to this extent. Um, it's no secret we've had a pretty dry spring. How's the water situation? Yeah, so our survey efforts had a, an interesting count where you know, we came out of winter with a lot of snow melt. We were expecting our wetland counts to be up, especially in our ephemeral wetlands that are temporary and seasonal wetlands. We expect those to dry out throughout the summer, but we broke uh, winter fairly early and we came out with some pretty hot, dry, windy conditions and we, we started losing those wetlands quite early. So our survey counted a lot of wetlands, or at least a decent number. Our number was quite a bit higher than last year even. We're, we're pretty close to the long-term average on a wetland count. But the condition of those wetlands was not very good as we were counting them. They were in the process of drying up. Some of them looked like they were just kind of hanging on. Um, you know, that's not the most attractive situation for ducks to settle in. They, they have a knack for recognizing that because they need to know what their, what their home is going to be like for a while. So, um, you know, we had a decent count during the survey, but since then we've really dried up and I think most of the state recognizes that with drought conditions and, and a real lack of precipitation in, in the last three months. Um, you know, the, the northeast and east central part of the state's had a little bit more rainfall, so they're probably doing a little bit better, but uh, yeah, it's, it's been a little tough lately and, and we could use some rain. Another downside, I guess, to the duck populations and the monitoring efforts that you're doing is, of course, the loss of CRP or grasslands of any kind. Right, those, those uh, perennial grass habitats are really important for ground nesting birds, not only, not only waterfowl, but other, other birds that are nesting on the ground, pheasants, as an example. But uh, yeah, the, the waterfowl uh, breeding in the state, primarily ducks, have, have definitely been taking a hit on places to successfully raise a nest over the last few years. We've got less than half as much CRP as we did in 2007. So as we dry up, we'll start seeing the effects of not having CRP anymore. We're, we, we've had a couple years where we've kind of gotten lucky with abundant water and, and ducks can kind of get lucky and make a few uh, odds and ends meet when they have lots and lots of water. But when you don't have lots and lots of water and you don't have much CRP, it's going to be very tough. 
Well, big question. What's the monitoring effort showing? Well, we're down about 15% again uh, from last year. We've had a series of years now where we've been sort of progressively lower and lower and lower on our population estimates. Uh, we had an estimate this year of 2.95 million breeding ducks in the state, which is the first time we've dropped below 3 million birds since 1994. Um, it is still a big number. It's 23% it's above the, the long-term average going back to 1948. So we still have a lot of ducks, but it is a, a, a fairly stark number in that it's uh, the lowest one we've had since we've gone into this new era of really, really good waterfowl conditions in North Dakota. It's not the kind of trend that you want to see. Right, and we're sort of getting to that point in the trend where we don't know, you know, if we're going to bounce back or if we're going to break into some of the kind of old time numbers where we start comparing our breeding population estimate to numbers against stuff we saw in the 60s and 70s. Did you see any surprises? Um, it, it wasn't too terribly surprising. I mean, we kind of knew with the snowfall and, and ensuing dry conditions what things were going to look like, but there were some areas that really did not have waterfowl really settling in them that typically one would think you'd see more birds around, and, and part of that was just there weren't, there weren't many seasonal basins. Uh, a lot of the water was large, just kind of big consolidated basins and, and not a lot of grass on the landscape and those places really did not have many ducks. Can you kind of summarize what this fall might look like for waterfowl hunters? Boy, it's, it's a wild card right now, that's for sure. Uh, other than knowing that most of the western part of the state's very dry right now, um, it's, it's tough to know. Uh, we, we probably aren't going to have very good reproduction in the state this year for ducks. Um, our, our early season hunting could suffer a little bit for that. After that, you know, as we all know, it gets into weathered patterns and, and production in areas north of us, and uh, it's just really hard to know how that could work out. I mean, we've had some, some pretty tough years for migration with really nice falls the last couple of years. It's hard to know if we'll get that again. Um, the good thing is, is that Saskatchewan seems like it's set up fairly well for production, so um, we're, not, we're not overly concerned about continental duck populations at this point, but, um, you know, one, one piece of the puzzle is lagging behind right now, and that'd be us. All right, Mike, thanks. You bet, Tom. For information on upcoming seasons, educational programs, conservation, and other North Dakota Game and Fish Department activities, visit our website at gf.nd.gov or you can follow us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash ndgnf. For Mike Szymanski and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.